you referenced a practice by Darwin that when he found something that was contrary to his established conclusions, he quickly wrote it down because the mind would have pushed it out. And if you read The Origin of Species, Darwin's very careful to avoid fooling himself. He very carefully asks and answers the hard questions. It's a feedback mechanism, and you've picked up on one of his feedback mechanisms to avoid fooling yourself. So the two questions are this. If you look at model how you think, Charlie thinks, how physicists think, how mathematicians think, you see the same pattern. You want to use logic. You're dedicated to logic. But logic's not enough. You have to avoid fooling yourself. So you build feedback mechanisms. So the first question is, do you see it that way? That you're thinking just like mathematicians, physicists, and some of the other exceptional businessmen by being logical and being careful to have feedback mechanisms. And the second question is about other feedback mechanisms. Your partnership sitting next to you is, is a great feedback mechanism. It's hard to fool yourself when you partner with Charlie Munger. Right. This meeting is a feedback Hard, hard to fool him, too. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not an accident. Um, the meeting on one level is a feedback mechanism. The way you attack the annual report letter is a feedback mechanism. So could you comment, both of you, on other feedback mechanisms you developed? Thank you. Well, you've come up with two very good ones. I mean, there's no question that, that Charlie will not accept anything I say because I say it. Uh, whereas a lot of other people will, you know, I mean, it's just the way the world works. They, and it's, it's terrific to have a partner who will uh, say, you know, you're not thinking straight. Uh, Doesn't happen very often. <laughs> the, there's no question the human mind, that what the human being is best at doing is interpreting all new information so that their prior conclusions remain intact. I mean, that is... That is a talent everyone seems to have mastered. And, and how do we guard ourselves against it? Well, we don't, we don't achieve it perfectly. I mean, Charlie and I have made big mistakes because, in effect, we have been unwilling to, uh, to look afresh at something. Uh, 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 you know, that happens. But we do have, I think the annual report is a good feedback mechanism. I think that, that reporting on yourself and particularly being a report honestly, whether you do it through an annual report or do it through some other mechanism is, is very useful. But there, I, I would say a, a partner who is not subservient and who himself is extremely logical, you know, is probably the, the best mechanism you can have. And uh, I would say that on, on the contrary, to get back to looking things you have to, have to, uh, be sure you don't fall into. I would say the typical corporate organization is designed so that the uh, CEO uh, opinions and biases and previous beliefs are reinforced in every possible way. I mean, uh, having staff around you that know what you want to do, uh, you are not going to get a lot of uh, you're getting a lot of contrary thinking. I mean, most most staffs, if they know you want to buy a company, you're going to get a recommendation. Whatever your hurdle rate, if it's 15% internal rate of return, which very few deals ever work out at, you know, or 12, or you're going to, it, they're going to come back and 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 they're going to come back with whatever they feel that you want. And if you arrange your organization so that you basically have a bunch of uh, uh, you know sycophants who are are cloaked in other, you know, uh, titles, uh, you're not going to get, you're going to leave your prior conclusions intact and you're going to get whatever you go in with your biases wanting and the board is not going to be much of a check on that. Uh, I've seen very, very few boards that can stand up to the CEO on something that's important to the CEO and just say, you know, you're not going to get it. So I, you've hit on a terribly important point that, uh, you know, all of us in this room want to read new information and have it confirm our cherished beliefs. I mean, it is just built into the, the human system. Uh, and that can be very expensive uh, in the investment and business world. And uh, like I say, I think we've got a, a pretty good system 
Uh, and I think that most of the systems aren't very good that exist in corporate America uh, to avoid falling in the trap you're talking about. Charlie? Yeah, I think it also helps to be willing to reverse course, even when it's quite painful. As we sit here, I think Berkshire is the only big corporation in America that is running off a derivative book. And we originally made the decision to allow the general re derivative book to continue. And it's a very unpleasant thing to do to reverse that decision, yet we're perfectly willing to do it. Nobody else is doing it. And yet it's perfectly obvious, at least to me, that to say that derivative accounting in America is a sewer is an insult to sewage. 